Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 80 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. This one's called, and this one's a little out of order but I, I thought I'd make this the very first one. It's called, What Happened to the YouTube Scoreboard? Mark, Someone apparently is tired of you keeping score on YouTube because the search result numbers have been removed entirely. I wonder what they will do next. Keep up the good work, Frank. And yeah, uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take entire credit for it. You may hear me sometimes say sometimes in the future now that I broke the YouTube score scoreboard, but that's not entirely true. We broke the YouTube scoreboard, and if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, when YouTube was created, no different than any search engine, you see the search results. And in YouTube, there was something called relevant search results. And this number had been underneath any search that you ever did on YouTube since the inception of it. And back in the beginning of 2017, when our numbers were, were really climbing in the general search, you didn't even have to use the filters. When we were up over, I think, 10 million or something like that. They they did a stat squish on us where they just simply went in and said, okay, only show 70% of the search results for, for Flat Earth. And it went down like 3 million in an evening, which is just unheard of. It was ridiculous. And nobody's videos got deleted, mind you. And then the adpocalypse came around. And then uh, they did another thing recently after our numbers kept, let me back up a little bit. So Bob from Globebusters let me know that I didn't have to worry about the general search because the filter by upload date was always accurate. In fact, he said it was the most accurate number there was out there. And that number just kept going up and up and up and they never fixed it. And to the point where we, it was very, very reliable and I could use it to track other things. I could see that we were tracking higher than Lady Gaga and Neil deGrasse Tyson and and all these other things, but we were always at least 2 million behind the president, Donald Trump, the current president. And then in just a, just a couple of months ago, not, not very long at all, not even a couple of months, we passed him. We, at, at the, before everything broke, we went, went to 20.9 million relevant search results. That doesn't mean total number of videos. That means total number of relevant hits inside of YouTube, anything in descriptions, anything mentioned in other videos. Their algorithms tracked us at 20.9 million, and Trump was at 20.8 million. And I actually made an episode, a Strange World episode, heralding that accomplishment and saying, yeah, we just, we just overtook the president of the United States, which is no small feat, considering we did this with almost no marketing dollars whatsoever. And so then they fixed that filter as well. They squashed us and overnight we went from 20.9 down to about 14. It was, I don't know, a 30, 30%, 40%, no, about 30% reduction. And that was a, that was kind of a big deal. I was going, all right, fine. You did a stat squish on us. And then our numbers kept ratcheting up again. And we, I, I called them out on it. And so just in the last week, they did something that was completely unprecedented. They pulled the, pulled down the score. <laughs> they just ripped down the scoreboard. So now it's gone. Now you, you go up into YouTube and you type in uh, anything, anything into the, into the search. There's no search result number at all. It doesn't say search results equals or whatever. That line is just gone. The word search results and whatever number after it is is completely gone. And, and uh, Flat Earth can take a bow for that. Uh, I consider that uh, a victory in no small sense because they were so tired of us talking about the numbers. And I know I talked about the numbers more often than, than not because I love the numbers. I love the stats. And this, yeah, it hurts me in, in one sense. I, I feel bad because uh, one, I love the numbers and, and I'm going to miss not seeing them. Uh, I also feel slightly guilty because anybody else that searches something. So if you, you search something for uh, baked potato recipes, you, you're not going to get a total number of search results. And there's internet marketing companies that I'm sure will complain to YouTube and say, uh, how can we track this? And since YouTube is owned by Google, they'll say, well, just use our Google search. That's, that's good enough. And yes, when you go into Google, those search result numbers are still there. But remember, that, it's, that goes over broad, everything inside Google, so it's much bigger. 
We thought it was very interesting, though. So if you get a chance, and you're not going to see it on your phone because the, there's only so much stuff that can you can see on a phone, but on your laptop or your desktop or whatever, you'll be able to see it. That now it's gone. There there are no search results. And Flat Earth did this, and you, and and you skeptics out there that say no, no, it's just coincidence. <laughs> My ass, it's a coincidence. Really, we we were we were hyping up the numbers. It it kind of reminded me of, me of the whole. Um, uh, cheerleading thing because my sister was a cheerleader i had to grow up with that so the, you remember the the old cheer the timeless cheer we got spirit yes we do we got spirit how about you and eventually you know you, and, and the other team would say it and you know you go back and forth until finally say we got more look at the score we got more look at the score and so they got mad and they pouted and they just tore down their own scoreboard great but at the same at the same point i'll end on this at the same point um we everybody's on the same playing field now or it's on the it's on the same level because now there's no score tied to any tied to any particular topic so now it comes down to straight up content which is what it should have been in the first place but anyway that, that was the first one let's move on shall we let's go to lunar eclipse Hey, Mark, I had an idea for the upcoming lunar eclipse in July, but don't know who could perform such an experiment. So I thought I'd ask you, I would like to see someone take a measurement of the precise brightness of the moon before and after the eclipse to see if there's any measurable difference. If the moon is self-illuminated, this would surely shed some light on the subject, pun intended. With your knowledge and resources, maybe you can make this happen. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, there's people doing lunar tests right now. I don't know how many. Uh, a lot of people are focused on the infrared filters for the cameras because of what the work that was done by that guy in Los Angeles. But I know the people are working on it, and that was from Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. This one's called, Have You Seen This? <clears throat> hey, Mark. Sean from Greenwood, Indiana. Digging your work since 2015, man. Keep it up. Fellow f -E -er here, thanks to you, Skiba, Davidson, etc. But most importantly, God, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just want to run this by you in case you haven't seen it. I was doing some research and came across this web webpage by Time Magazine. Uh, check out th how the fisheye deceives people as usual, but you can right-click and switch to normal view. And when you do that, yeah, you know. I think this could be used as another powerful tool in our side to point out the obvious, for it shows the ridiculous distortion of a fisheye. Thanks again for all you do. Keep it flat. P.S. There's a zoom tool on the top right. See uh, how far you can zoom and nothing is bending backwards. Amazing. Ha. Huh? And that's from Say Ro. Uh, S-E space R-O. And, well, actually, it's, oh, I get what he did. He abbreviated Sean. So... The website is called wtc.gigapan.com slash WTC. So I will check that out. I'll put that in my to-do pile. And we will look at that once we're done. This one's called Survival Guide. Mark, thanks in advance for the Survival Guide. Safe travels to Sultan. Yeah, it also shows you how far back I am in emails. You guys keep those rookies in line down there. Looking forward to the results. Via con Dios, Patrick. Uh, you're welcome, Patrick. And yeah, we had a lot of fun down at Salton. Can't wait to see what National Geographic does with that footage, which should not come out until September at the earliest. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure they will make me look like some sort of villain, but that's okay. This one's called Colorado. Mark, my boy Wes is out of your old neck of the woods for the summer. He's working at the YMCA of the Rockies out in Estes Park. He was at Eagles C Cliff yesterday. That's from David. Yes, that would be my neck of the woods. I was there for 20 years. I lived in Boulder, Colorado for 20 years. And then uh, now I'm back in Seattle, the Northwest area, just North of Seattle on a little Island called Whidbey, W H I D B E Y. This one's called check this flat earth. And there's a picture in it. Picture, picture. I'm supposed to enunciate that more. It's uh, orbit gum. Oh, how Orbit Gum, the logo in Orbit's Gum, if you turn it sideways, represents sort of a flat Earth. Waters above, dome firmament, sun, flat plain, great deep ice wall. Huh, Orbit's Gum. Nice. Thank you for that. That's really, really cool. That's from Vasca. This one's called Hi Mark, Tom from Shelton, all caps. 
Mark, what am I seeing and have been seeing is this celestial solid body orbs, terrain features, and sun planet orb, I guess. Electromagnetic reaction producing red light downward, violent flashing in sky on certain cameras at certain times, and getting worse, bigger. I assume closer every day. I do not know which YouTube video that you give your opinion in depth in this increasingly incur occurring sky stuff thanks to live cameras and the internet. I have all what I am talking about on my personal camera. I take pictures on computer screens and works real good. The, oh boy, very Siabi Sun. Wow, he just totally screwed up that one. Uh, planet reaction. I something have plenty of live in motion video of my camera. Come on, guys, do grammar check before you send me these things. But do not know how to send it by email pictures. Yes, anyway, something big behind sun. Huge ridges, reflected lighted stripes or strict streaks. Okay, tell me specifically what YouTube video and how far into the video you start talking about your take on this. Thanks much, Tom Shelton. Have a thousand picks on my camera. The subject bottom pick is LaPush Washington, James Island camera, a while back. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, yeah, lots of people have, uh, oh yeah, upper is Guadalajara, Mexico, sunrise. Lots of people have, have mentioned objects around the sun, very possible. Just don't forget that the sun is very, very small by comparison. It's not hundreds of thousands of miles wide. It's probably less than 50 miles wide. So thank you for that. This one's called, Are They Trying to Scare Us About the Salton Sea? Good morning, Mark. I'm not sure if you came across this article on The Verge. For some reason, I could not send it as a link. Are we supposed to take breathing masks? Are they trying to scare us? Uh, please ne let me know what you think. Thanks, Anna. Uh, I'm sorry. Thanks, Alma. And the article was called, As California's Largest Lake Dries Up, It Threatens Nearby Communities with Clouds of Dust. Uh, and then that article was June 6, 2018. Yeah, it was not pleasant. The Salton Sea is, is, a, is a dead lake, more or less. I mean, yeah, there's a, a certain species of fish that still survives out there, but it was not fun. It was smelly. It was hot. Uh, we were there really early in the morning, and we were with Globe Skept... I'm sorry, um, Flat Earth Skeptics. And it was just... It was unpleasant. Uh, National Geographic team was great. I loved working with them, but they were... Um, you know, we, it was still way, way, the, the conditions were awful. Okay, this one's called, Hey Mark, can you please send me a PDF survival guide? And that was the name of the title, and he repeats it in the first line. P.S. I am 100% with you, Mark Burden, the earth is flat. Yep, and I sent it to him. This one's called, You Called It a Year Ago. And it's a Daily Mail article called... Called what? The article is called, Is Elon Musk's space tourism plan in trouble? SpaceX founder delays sending people to the moon due to technical challenges. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When I saw that headline, and that's from um, Flat Earth member, mail carrier, and genius Steve. And it, yeah, when I, I was up in Canada, when I first heard him say this, because this was the beginning of 2017 when he said this. He, he said that, oh yeah, we're going to send two tourists around the moon in my rocket and we're, they'll pay a certain amount of money and, and we'll get this stuff done. And, and, I'm going, and, and it was such an aggressive timetable. When I heard it, I was going, what are you talking about? It's not even, that's barely even a year and a half away. Not even a year and a half. So how are you going to pull this off? You, you literally have nothing ready to, to even make that sort of claim. If you had a rocket on the pad, if you had uh, astronauts champing at the bit, if you had a, a capsule that had been tested, uh, sure, I, I might be able to at least give you the the latitude to make that claim. But the the timetable was far far too aggressive, and just, so yeah, he just kicked the can down the road. In fact, he, he just, there's no timetable now. He just said, nope, it's delayed ind indefinitely. Nobody's going to the moon. Nobody ever was. Of course, uh, you want to go down that road. Uh, look up there was a wonderful thing by i think it was hibbler productions where they were talking they showed a clip where bill clinton's talking about going to to mars bill clinton talking about mars missions how they're going to fire them up in the mid 90s yeah, it's 2018 nobody's going anywhere nobody's going anywhere but if they remind people every once in a while all they do is say oh yeah we're going to mars going to mars the the general public has been so numbed by media that you could probably go to them on the street and i bet you you'd get three out of every 10 people 
if you told them that's like, oh yeah, by the way, do you know we have a Mars colony? I bet you'd get three out of 10 people that say, yeah, yeah, we do. Or show them a single picture of like, just take a, a cropped shot from the Martian with Matt Damon and say, oh yeah, we've got a Mars colony. And people say, wow, that's really cool. And they'd believe it. Amazing. This one's called Earth. Mr. Sergeant. Hello, my name is Brett Purvis. Wow, that's weird because my uh, grandfather's name was Purvis. Uh, I'm from G Guelph? Guelph, Ontario. I've never heard of that town. It's about 100, oh, that's why it's 100, 100 kilometers west of Toronto. I'm 35 years old, and from what I've been watching your videos, I consider myself to be much like yourself. I've always had a fascination with conspiracies. I've looked on the TV show Ancient Aliens mainly because I never really believed everything that the authority has been telling me was the truth and wanted something else to believe. I soon decided that what they were trying to sell me with the ancient astronaut theory was also not quite right either. Interesting, yes, but not exactly right. I am not highly educated. I graduated high school when I was 33. Hmm. Better late than never, right? And you mentioned 33, and so people are going, oh no, 33. Yeah, I'm reading it as is, folks. However, I consider myself to be quite intelligent. I first heard about you when you were on the podcast, The Unexplained, with Howard Hughes. I was like most other people and thought, what a joke. But I listened intently to your arguments, and after the show, I still thought that you were wrong. But that you did a very good job of putting forth your argument. A week or two went by, and I was still thinking about the interview, yeah? marble in the paint can there you go so i listened to it again and again then last week i watched your clues and then i watched them again and again and again <laughs> oh no yeah if you watch the clues repeatedly you're gonna have problems uh it all makes sense to me it is obvious that the earth is flat and that the governments around the world at the highest levels know it i'm a married man with four children all in their teens i want to tell my wife and kids uh what i now believe but i'm afraid of sounding crazy i don't know what to do about this perhaps you know a way i can introduce them into the topic i want to thank you for opening my eyes to this i want to thank you for your dedication to spreading the good word keep up the good work i am grateful beyond words have a great day regards brett purvis and yeah, I'll put this in my to-do pile and tell him that I'm going to respond right now. Uh, I'm just going to do it. Just tell you my response, which is d don't tell your family. You know, don't, if you're, if you're going to do it, do it sideways. I mean, if your wife believes everything that's on, on television, everything that's in the newspaper, whoever still reads the newspapers, uh, then, then come at her sideways and say, Hey, I heard this crazy internet thing. Don't sit down at the family dinner table and just announce to your, your wife and kids that you are into flat earth because you will come off just like Richard Dreyfus in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, when after he viewed uh, some sort of flying spaceship, he just acted very, very eccentric and was building things out of his mashed potatoes and was not even paying attention to his family at all. And he got fired and he became just, I mean, in any other era, he would have been on medication and put up, put in a mental facility. But back in the 70s, they were a little more tolerant about that. So, yeah, be careful. I mean, the, the flat club, club rule still applies, which is, yeah, you can tell people. Of course you can. Just be careful. Size them up. Don't lose your job over this. Don't lose your church congregation. Don't lose your family because of this. Treat it very, very gently. I'm just, just saying. All right, moving on. This one's called Watch First Man Trailer 2018 on YouTube. Yep, they are finally, and we'll see, we'll see what sort of, uh, what it, what have you know, I, I haven't, I haven't seen the release date. I don't know anyone that's watched it. They are finally going to do some sort of a moon movie, which is basically uh, the story of Neil Armstrong, because he's, he's passed away some years ago, and Ryan Gosling is going to play Neil, and so, and from what the trailer shows, they are going to throw in some moon shots i mean most of it'll be like the right stuff his whole life leading up there and then when he gets up there they'll probably spend i don't know 20 minutes maybe on the moon I, that's my guess so that's what i would do anyway the rest of it'll be again just a, a clone of the right stuff from 1983 so yeah there you go proves my my very first clue which was there were no moon movies the, the only movies that even touched on the space program were the right stuff in 1983 and Apollo 13 in 1990, oh boy, 1995, 
I got a 95, 96, something like that. So, yeah, if anyone, I, I will not see the first man in the theater, but if anyone sees it, please let me know. This one's called Curvature. Hi, Mark. Love your work and everything you bring to the table of truth. I'm just wondering if you've ever challenged anyone to find a place on the earth shooting over any part of the ocean to actually find a place, any any place where the equation can be used to determine the distance of the sun, moon, and stars from the earth can be calculated. It's, that sentence is not well constructed. And the and the two actually using, I'm reading it as is, a laser beam shoot across the water either from island to island or main land to island or along any coastline shoot a laser beam, whether it be 10 miles, 20 miles, any distance that truly shows any drop in elevation that makes their equation, uh, not much punctu punctuation, guys. Uh, makes their equation work showing the distance of the sun, moon, or any star in the constellation to be a ridiculous distances they are saying they are? Question mark. I am a firm believer that no one will be able to find anywhere on the entire that will show any curvature that makes their equation work other than to show that they are local 3,500 miles or so above the earth. Ask them to find such a place anywhere as long as they are shooting over or alongside, I'm almost done, I swear, of any body of water, show you or us that place, please find it because I have yet to see anyone to show any, I'm gonna, I'll am correct it, it's curve at all, and until they can actually show that place to exist, then they are full of crap. Show me please where this place, where if they cannot, then well, we all know just how much crap they are full of. He didn't say crap. Thank you, Mark. God rockin', show it to us, where is it? That's from John. Thank you, John. I love the enthusiasm. Love it. Yep. All right, moving on. This one's called from the game Sniper Shooter. That's from Lewis. Hey, he goes, my son just found it. And yeah, there's there's a, a, a phone game. It was actually from 2015 called Sniper Shooter where someone, uh, where one of the targets was a teacher that was teaching flat earth to the students and you were supposed to go kill him. And so it, it, I, I've, I mean, I've had that screenshot in my, my slides for a long time and I'm really surprised that it's coming back around and, and people have noticed it again, but yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an, it's a game from a few years ago called sniper shooter. You can look it up flat earth and you'll see the slide. I don't know how popular a game it is, but it got a little traction. This one's called, they need to answer this too. Hey, Mark. Okay. They find planets in their telescopes that are circling stars 40 million light years away. Suggest we need to colonize them. What happens when you get halfway there and discover that star exploded 20 million years ago? We are seeing the light from those stars from 40 million years ago, right? Loving my earth. That's flat, Greg. Yeah. Excellent point. Excellent point. Of course, it's space is just an illusion. And all those vast distances don't exist, but still love your love your thinking outside the box. Or in this case, outside the dome. This one's called Biosphere 2, Wikipedia. <clears throat> Hello, Mark. I thought I'd pass this information on about a dome enclosed system in Tucson, Arizona. It is like a miniature flat earth. There's a documentary on it that I'm watching right now called Odyssey in Two Biospheres. With joy in Jesus, Nordy Nutson. And the Wikipedia entry is called Biosphere 2. So check it out when you get a chance. It was also sent to D Marble, by the way. I try to give credit to the people that I'm, I'm carboned on. So maybe D addressed this already. I'm not sure. This one's called... What? Uh, this one's a little long. I'm not going to read that one. This one's called Prepper Guide. Hi, Mark. I'd like a copy of your Prepper Guide. Thanks, Adam Green. And yep, anyone who wants a free survival guide, it's about 100 pages long. It's in PDF format. I can just shoot it to you through this email. All you have to do is email me and say, I want your Prepper Guide. In any way, shape, or form, you want to say that. And you don't even have to put anything in the, in the body if you don't want. This one's called Pick for Whatever. People who send me pics all the time. And there's no, it's three megs and what's in it? It is, oh yeah, look at that. That's the Flat Earth store called the Flat Earth. And why haven't I used this thing yet? I should, I should use this. Did I already respond to him? I think I did. I think I already put it. It's from David Romero. Thank you, David. Yeah, I think it's over in the UK somewhere. 
this this flat earth store that's really really cool i love it in fact you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna put that in my to-do pile and i'm gonna use that as a thumbnail coming up i think that's great i know i've got it in my slideshow somewhere but i think it's i think it's worthy of a thumbnail this one's called a conversation. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. I just recently found your YouTube channel and I was hoping I could set up a conversation with you to understand more about you and your ideology. You can email me back here whenever. Thank you. And that's from Kenneth. All right. I will contact Kenneth. This one's called see this. Mark, I need you to see this photo. If the world were a globe, wouldn't the Milky Way be more of a stripe than a half circle? Doesn't this prove the Milky Way that the Earth is flat? Yeah. Well, I, it doesn't prove it. There's there's lots of things that hint at a flat Earth. But proof is a whole nother thing. I think long-distance photography is a, a great one uh, as, as far as visual proof. I think that's probably the easiest. Or a laser test. I think those are the, the, the best proofs. Unless you can you know, get something and go up high enough to, to possibly take a shot. This one's called New Proof Video of Talk I Gave. Hi, Mark. I have a recorded talk I did on a YouTube video, 25 minutes long. Three proofs. First two small, last one massive. Have a look. Uh, it's from Chris. And the video is called... I already gave it a thumbs up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw this one. It's good. It's called John Smith Globe Lie. It was published June 11th, uh, 2018. Uh, it was good. Yeah, I already gave it a thumbs up. And I commented on it as well. So thank you for that. It's good. Good presentation. In the backyard of somewhere. This one's called Another Flat Earther. Dear Sir, all right, I found your YouTube videos to be quite intriguing. I also believe that the Earth is a flat, motionless plane and also noticed that this isn't a conversation you can have with just anyone. Isn't that the truth? The mind programming is so powerful that no one is open-minded enough to accept this fact but chose to believe in the education system. It's quite sad, to be honest, and I'm reaching out to you because I had one question. What do they hope to gain by keeping the truth away from us? Uh, watch the clues again. I mean, it would definitely cause worldwide chaos, but other than that, why did they need to conceal the truth? You, that alone is what you're, you just answered your own question. Definitely call, cause worldwide chaos. So why would you do it? If you like the world the way it is, meaning the powers that be, if you have everything just in a nice order, why would you want to wreck it? That alone. That, I mean, there's more than that, just that, but that alone, you answered your own question. I also find it strange that the Vatican has several telescopes like Lucifer. It is strange that the Vatican has a telescope called Lucifer, but never release any images of their observations. Why does the Vatican keep this away from us? Shouldn't their main goal be to help mankind realize its true potential and the meaning of life? Or are they also corrupted by the system? Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, I have also heard of the Vatican archives. Do you suppose the truth lies there? Some of it? Yeah. Yeah, some of it. It's nice to chat with a like-minded individual. I hope my email isn't too long. It's not. I just wanted to see what your thoughts are on the matter. Best regards, Umesh. Yep. Good stuff, Umesh. This one's called Question... Mark, I saw your vids with Sasha, otherwise known as Orphan Red. I figured you might have some information on her. The other day, all of her videos disappeared from YouTube and her Facebook seems to be down. I'm hoping you could shed some light on what happened. And if you still talk with her, would you ask her not to give up if that's what she did? And that's from Jason. Uh, yes, Jason, I, the, my information on her is she is a flat earther living in Vancouver, British Columbia, up in Canada. I have met her a couple of times. And uh, she's been doing videos on Flat Earth. So that's better. I wish, honestly, I wish she wouldn't say any bad things about me uh, because I have no ill will against her. And I wish she would stay positive. I think she's very intelligent and uh, hope that she continues to progress with whatever she's doing. That's about it. That's about all I got. And of course, I don't think she's going to give up. She's tougher than that. This one's called, Finally Met You in Arcadia. Hi, Patricia and Mark. This is Alexander, Sasha, Mexico, Panish, or F.E. Mex. I'm writing, writing to both of you. Oh, yeah, I remember this guy. 
Uh, I'm writing to both of you together to connect the stories. It was finally a pleasure to meet you guys in person after so long. Patricia, I still owe you a bear hug. Yeah, you don't want to bear hug her because she's really small. She'd probably just break. Uh, since I'm from the industry, I knew better than to mess up your attire or makeup. Ha ha ha. And with all the beautiful and numerous crowd, no time, and then I had to run to a rehearsal. Anyway, Mark, thanks for the photo uh, for George from Serbia. He sent some more gre warm greetings to all photos shared below. And must tell you both that you cracked me up with the son of Croatia. I was born in Croatia and lived all over Yugoslavia until I moved to Mexico and later to L.A., you will now probably run into my channel and the Flat Earth Topics. Thank you, Mark, for the idea. Just wanted to make a shorter version of it all. Thank you, Patri for Trish Patricia, for pushing me to make content and put my face out there. I ended up co-hosting a weekly Saturday FE Hangout for the Balkans. Uh, last title, I can't pronounce that. Force the Curve, episode 55. Hope you had a nice time in Cali. Also to see you around again. Still don't know what happened on Sunday, but I can imagine. Fictional Geographic. Oh, yeah, it was fun. Uh, love, Sasha. Oh, keep it flat. Patricia, thanks for subscribing today. And there's my channel, Flat Earth Topics, Hangouts, my original music channel. And <laughs> that's a funny picture of me. That's good stuff. F.E. Mix. Yeah, that was from Arcadia. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, man. It's awesome. This one's called uh, Multiple Government Documents Mention Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. It was really nice finally to get, you, get to meet you in Arcadia and giving you a hug. I don't know if you have reached this video from Pastor... Sorry. Wow. I'm seeing words. Uh, watch this video from Pastor Odell. It is gold at around minute 38. He goes on for an hour presenting the different documents from the Army, Air Force, CIA, Navy, and NASA, admitting the Earth, Earth is stationary and flat. Yep, I've seen these documents. Hopefully you can mirror it on your channel. Thanks, Alma. Yep. Thanks, Alma. This one's called The Dome is Perspective, Flat Earth but Square. Please look, it's very interesting. Hi Mark, I've been watching your show for a long time and by observing the sky, stars, sun, satellites, and moon, I came across the idea that the dome is just our perspective and not the real shape of the sky. Please see the video from Free Energy where they explain the stars and sun as being light sources or waves and only our 3D perception could make them appear having a circular motion as in the wave particle model, I guess. They have great exclamations for many things related to the flat earth, but square, not circle, as in the AE model. I think it would help a lot in the flat earth community if you could explain it easier in your show. Thanks a lot and keep up the great work, Dan. Yep. This one's called Damn, it is flat, isn't it? Mark. He said that with three A's. Hey, on Mythbusters, I saw an episode where they proclaim that cell phones have no effect on the plane crashing. I hate those corrupt bastards, but it's interesting that they do help reinforce the Flat Earth model in that instance. Thanks, buddy. And that's from Casey Wilkinson. Yep. Uh, the Mythbusters guys oh, ticked me off. Because they did that one episode where they were proving the moon. They were trying to basically, they were backing NASA. And they, they said, oh, yeah. And they went to an observatory and they fired a laser supposedly at the moon and had a computer register like one photon bounce back or something like that. And they like gave each other high fives at the end. It was just, yeah. Yeah, they are pieces of work, those two. This one's called Watch Jim Carrey is Back and He Deserves an Oscar for This Acting on YouTube. And check this out, Mark. What do you think all the symbolism in Jim's video means? Does he know something or what? Yeah, Jim Carrey is making a comeback. He's doing a bunch of more serious roles. People can say about the, the, what they want, that he was an overactor and, and he had his little niche. But uh, look, he did a lot of work back in the day. And you could tell that he, could, he had quite a range. Uh, now, the, the, his range went from eccentric to really, really, really crazy. So it's, 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 it's kind of like a, like a finely honed version of overacting. But I like it. I, I've always liked Jim Carrey's work. I think he's extremely funny. All right. This one's called Salt and Sea Test and Equipment. Hey, Mark. I just left a comment in your last video. I should have just emailed you instead. So here goes. I want to know if the guy that had the FaceTime going on happened to show National Geographic correspondent the footage when the balloon was at six feet. I was at Arcadia Park but didn't get a chance to talk to you. My dog was being obnoxious very loud. I had to take my... Uh, I take my way to the car. Make my way to the car? 
Uh, if I would have known about the Salton Sea, I would have been there early. Please put me in your email, a list of upcoming events. Also, I want to ask you if you know any companies that have inexpensive tracking beacons and a high altitude balloon. Also, if you know of anybody that's scheduled events, I'm going to email Rob Skiba to see if we can get groups together in different states to send up high altitude to altitude balloons for the 2024 eclipse. Thanks for your time. Have a blessed day. Sincerely, George. Thank you, George. And yeah, I was so busy. I didn't even really talk to a lot of people about the Salton Sea experiment. It just got passed through the, the grapevine at the meetup. Uh, we're not doing a Salton Sea test this time around, so you guys can enjoy the meetup. Uh, you know, I'm going to one uh, this coming sa Friday. This, this coming Friday in uh, Pasadena. So if you want to go to that one, by all means, all you have to do is type in Flat Earth Meetup Pasadena. And all the details will be there. Should be a lot of fun. This one's called Salt and Sea. Thank you. Hi, Mark and Patricia. I just want to say it was a great pleasure meeting you uh, and flat earthing with you this past weekend in Arcadia and at the Salt and Sea. With great appreciation, Sasha. Thank you, Sasha. Not Orphan Red Sasha. Different Sasha. This one's called Army Artillery Guy. Mark, I was just having a talk with an artillery guy in the army. I asked him about the Coriolis effect. He said that he has never heard of someone accounting for it. More nails in the coffin. That's from Paul. Yep. All the other military people I've talked to, they've all said the same thing. Yeah, they've heard about it. They've heard about the curvature of the earth and they've heard about the Coriolis effect. They do not use it. End of story. This one's called, what's this one called? This one's called uh, update. What do we do? Blah, blah, blah. Nope. 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 That's one from Patricia. Pat producers were kind of haunting us. And we we're going, nope. No contract. We ain't signing anything. Not without a contract. This one's called Apollo Moon Landing Mystery Solved by Discovery of Long Lost NASA Tapes. Yeah, whatever. That's in newsweek.com slash moon Apollo 15 NASA. And uh, this is from Chris, and he goes, I found this, Mark. You just have to read. You won't believe this BS. Sincerely, Chris Lee from Tornado Alley. Oh, I'm sorry. Tornado Alley. Okay, this one's called New Jersey. Professor claims the historic Apollo 11 mission was faked. That's from the Daily Mail in the UK. And the headline says, we'll never get to the moon. Shocking video shows the moment a New Jersey professor claims the historic Apollo 11 mission was faked. Yep. Hopefully he still has a job. He's not alone. And that's in this country. Outside of this country. Well, you probably saw. If you haven't seen already, I, I did a little video on it. Uh, go to rt.com, Russia Today. And they did a poll of people in Russia. And most of them, I mean, pushing 60% of them, don't believe the Americans went to the moon. And they shouldn't. If anyone shouldn't believe it, it shouldn't be the Russians. Sorry. Need lemonade. I should really not do the treadmill before I do this. But I consider it more of a challenge to do the treadmill and then sit down and try to compose myself for this. Okay, this one's called Navy Laser Information. Hi, Mark. Just thought you might be interested in reading this. I'm seeing a lot of articles lately. I've got some good information on the Navy use of laser painting targets over long distances. And this one's called... Uh, it's at... Uh, Navy C dot Navy dot mill portals. Oh, wow. It's just way too long. Uh, thank you for your videos and the work you do. It's all very interesting stuff. It makes you think about the things that we just take for granted. Thanks again. Have a great day, Roy. My YouTube name is metal dog rides. That is a great YouTube name. I like that. All right. This one's called rivers prove the flat earth. Hey, Mark, it just occurred to me via meme that the water flow of every river on the earth goes from a water source from a higher elevation towards an ocean that is at sea level. Is that true? If so, it should be one of your flat earth clues for sure. It means rivers are a natural way for water to find its level on a flat earth. Mind equals blown. <laughs> That's from Jimmy. I don't know if it's worthy of a clue, but it's good. It's good. I like it. I like it. There's a couple clues I've got lined up, uh, which I'm not going to tell you about. Because uh, it'd be what clue fifteen and sixteen, which I'm already I'm already working on now, but I'm not going to release it until there's more of a de demand because there's so much content out there. Uh, but I am I will I will get them out there pretty soon. This one's called Watch First Man official trailer on YouTube. And that's from Chris. 
yep, people are going to be sending me. I am sure when that movie comes out officially, I will get just a flood of emails saying, have you seen, have you seen the astronaut movie? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. Cannot wait to see what special effects they use in the moon. Cause it's going to be, remember they, they can't make it better than it was. So it's going to be crap awful. It's going to look just like the real thing. And or, sorry, it's going to look just like the real fake thing. Of the first things they showed us and people will be suspicious. So can't wait. Have fun. Release it. Uh, this one's called hi, smiley face and survival guide, please. Hi, Mark. I'm Elijah here in Richmond, Virginia. Please excuse any weirdness in this email as I am a little high on feeling like I'm talking to a major celebrity. Ha ha ha. Yep. Okay. I just wanted to reach out to tell a bit of my story for those other weird people like me and to share my email to reach out to others in the Richmond area. You started me off my flat earth journey and I got to say thank God for your clues. I was into the show under the dome and saw your documentary of the same name. I know it isn't yours specifically, but whatever. I clicked it and by the time I got through the bird wall, I was sold. I saw that over two years ago and it blew my mind. But weirdly, I accepted it almost immediately. I lost no sleep and was totally at peace. Then I found Rob Skiba a few weeks later and the rest is history. But I had already been searching for truth and it just fell in my lap. When I was eight, I think, I first learned I was being blatantly lied to by mainstream science because they said the sun magically gets hotter when we are further away and colder when we are closer. Being a lover of camping and campfires, I knew that was BS. <laughs> well, there's that. Since then, I have taken everything told to me with a healthy dose of salt. Thanks so much for everything you do and wish you the best. P.S. Sorry you had to sit through that awful test this weekend. Those guys were unbelievable. Hopefully, National Geographic does well with their show. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I talk to the producer every once in a while. And, you know, he's a nice guy, but it's not up to him. He's the field producer. He just collects the info and sends it off to New York. I imagine he's got some input. Maybe. Maybe some, I don't know, hoping for the best. This one's called All the Stars Are Closer. Mark, this track seriously made me think of the dome, All the Stars Are Closer. It makes it seem like if Kendrick Lamar was talking to mainstream science with his short verse. Nevertheless, killer track. Check it out if you haven't already. And it's called All the Stars. And it's from Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have to check that out. All right. This one's called The Rest of the Story. Mark, just watched your 12-part documentary on the Flat Earth. You do have a gift for present, presenting information. I love it. A couple of questions and suggestions for your next part. You, as well as the other Flat Earthers, speak a lot about Antarctica and the ice wall. If the wall or the edge encircles the known world, then why the fixation on Antarctica? Why not sail or fly directly west from California? How can the government secure the entire... 360 degree wall i know there would be a problem with compass headings but mileage could be tracked and determining a straight line of travel would be relatively easy my intuition research has led me to the conclusion that we are eternal nine-dimensional creatures of mind and quite possibly we have created this earth space as a sort of vision quest in order to grow and refine our soul a sort of cosmic pilates workout <laughs> I'm still so stealing that, of our lower frequencies of mind, much like going to the gym in order to develop physical muscles. The dome is not a barrier to keep us prisoner, but was a put in place for our own protection. And who or what created this amazing world? We did. The two big questions are, where do we come from and where do we go when we die? I would suggest that death is but another l big lie told us told to us in order to control us and keep us in a state of ignorance and enslavement what if we don't die i've died twice that was documented once i viewed a surgical error take place from the ceiling and later described the specific error the doctor had performed <clears throat> he was rather shocked another time i was flatlined for 27 minutes in a hospital setting no heartbeat no brain activity and yet the following day didn't even have a hangover there's a lot of new information popping up on youtube about frequencies and magnetism there's nothing solid everything is a pattern of frequency vibration everything looks like a magnetic pattern of energy frequency specifically two important frequencies drawing a lot of attention currently there are 432 and 528 megahertz recently they have even figured out the ancient stone builders didn't really use thousands of slaves pulling ropes, but merely created specific sound frequency signatures in order to move the huge stones. It would seem the veil is lifting and soon we are to graduate. Oh, please. Oh, please. Uh, or at least some of us are. Keep on keeping on. That's from Jan Berner. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Good stuff.
This one's called, I had a thought. Mark, I am looking at my globe and looking at the equator. Does it change with the precession of the earth? If not, that proves something, but I don't know what it is. I think that means the sun revolves around the surface of the earth, not the earth around the sun. That's from Phil. Yep. Like it. Like where your head's at. This one's called, did I, this one's a little too big but I'll read part of it. Did I stumble across the scientific description of the firmament dome? Dear Mark, uh, U.S. inventions to study, alter, and destroy. Uh, could it be that a large portion of our military budget, including things like the SDI under Reagan, oh, it's a Star Wars initiative, uh, were used for these means? It certainly seems so when you consider Harp, Operation Dominic, Fishbowl, etc. Check out the date, and the inventor below is responsible for many patents dealing with the fusion in the upper atmosphere, probably including a missile defense system. 1,500 kilometers is over 900 miles up. Nuclear missiles would not go that high. Uh, and the patents are for, one is for, method for producing a shell of relativistic particles at an altitude above the Earth's surface. And... Yeah. It's good stuff. And that's from Amy. Thank you, Amy. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's good. This one's called Lid Problems. Hi again, Mark. To solve your screwing on lid problem, just screw it on counterclockwise for about a half turn and then clockwise. Voila! Jam for everyone. And as always, Yahweh is a creator and builder. There are no builders. We should all be very pleased about that. Builders, that would suck. Yeah, you never know. Previous civilizations, sunken cities, flood, bro, sorted, winky face. I know you prefer to have requests for the SG in the title, but I'm a rebel, so I put it way down here. Please send me one. Yeah, see, now you're not going to love you, man. Take care, Johan. Now you get your survival guide. He didn't even say survival guide. He abbreviated it. Seriously? So now you're going to get it a month after you should have gotten it. So don't, don't be like, don't be like him. If you want the survival guide, put it early on the email. Don't save it for the end. All right. This one's called fake ISS. Hello, brother Mark. If you've not seen this UAP video, please begin at the one minute point in the above video. What exactly is going on in your opinion? Are there supposed to be a production assistance in space now? Isn't that the truth? Thank you for your insight on this one, friend. And thank you for being smart, experienced, and manly with that guy in the blue polo and sunglasses at the Salton Sea event. His ignorance was unsettling to me. I'm very grateful you are on our team. Robert Dunn. Thank you, Robert. And maybe I will meet you in Pasadena this Friday. This one's called FE Experiments to Share with Kids. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Flat Earth for kids. Hey, Mark, I'm going to be near Duluth, Minnesota. Oh, up there in late summer with my kids and would like them to reach their own conclusions. I don't have a good telescope, but an 80 millimeter lens on a Rebel EOS. EOS? I have some binoculars too and plan to map out some big distances over Lake Superior to the known distances to lighthouses and landmarks to defeat curvature. Any other ideas for simple experiments are appreciated. Thanks for all the videos. Emir. E-M-I-R. Uh, yeah, you're doing great. Let me know how those turned out. This one's called Curious About the Flat Earth Theory. Mark, I saw a lengthy YouTube video from you. It was very interesting and had a lot of good, good evidence. I'm not going to say I believe the earth is flat, but I'm not going to dismiss it either since I find it best to only trust things I truly understand and can see with my eyes in front of me. I have a few questions I'd like to ask. My first one is, why do you think they hid the fact? One out of every 10. I swear to God, you could set your watch to it. We were, why, why do you think they hid the fact we were caged in a snow globe like dome in the first place? Yep. He'll figure it out. This one's called Happy Father's Day. Mark, coast to coast one and two, please. And what else do you want? Happy Father's Day to you, mother. Oh, Mark, because you're the father of Flat Earth. Yeah, because I don't have kids. Uh, thanks for everything, Tony from Denver. Yep, never got married, never even got engaged. Thought about engagement a couple times, but that's another story for another time. This one's called The Day You Ruined My Life. That's great. Normally I would end on that one, but we still have a little ways to go. Hello, Mark. Just after New Year, I finally decided to watch a Flat Earth video. After many years of simply flicking through conspiracy theories and purposely laughing off a Flat Earth video whenever one popped up, I finally decided to watch one. 
thinking it was all nonsense while at the same time I knew it was true. I watched and listened with an open mind. I was pretty much convinced when given what was being explained, it all made sense to me when it hit me. Wait, I am a huge sci-fi guy. How can this be? That means it's all BS. I felt, felt a sudden sinking feeling in my mind and body as I play games such as Star Trek Online. I sat in game looking at the planet Earth, the globe, and thinking it's all BS. A sad moment indeed. It hit me hard. I got depressed and quit my job. If, really? And quit my job a few weeks later. I now have to come, come to terms with reality, but I see things through different eyes. That's from Ty Doug from Scotland. Well, uh, sorry you had to quit your job, but hopefully you got a hopefully you got a different job. Don't don't quit your job over flat Earth necessarily, unless it, unless you know you, you you think it has a it's a means to an end. This one's called "I Found a Portal in Antarctica," and this email's too big. So and that's from Mysterious One 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 One. So, but I will have a great day. Been a subscriber for years. Yeah, I. I'm sorry. It's the, the email's a little long. But thank you for that. This one's called NASA Vacuum Chamber. Mark, we do spacewalks with no fear, no cares in the world. Jump all over the moon. BS. And yeah, there's a um because my challenge about going into a vacuum chamber and he linked me a video says NASA vacuum chamber why they don't test with astronauts flat earth and that's from MIGMAG he did that uh, he did that back in August 12th of 2016 uh, I didn't I didn't invent the vacuum chamber thing I just was the only person to put a challenge in there saying put me in a vacuum chamber put me in coach I'll die for flat earth this one's called question about flat earth theory. Mark, I'm just getting into this flat earth conspiracy and it's blowing my mind. But the first thing that came to mind, couldn't someone just sail the perimeter circumference of the flat earth Antarctica and the mileage distance around it be a lot more than that of the actual Antarctica? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Let me know what, what happens because you, you just even below getting below the 60th parallel have to, even if you're going to sail down there, you've got to get a permit. This one's called Flat Earth. And it's loading. And it's still loading. And don't know what's taking so long. And there it goes. Uh, hello, Mr. Sergeant. My name is Anthony, and I saw your video of Flat Earth Clues, and I found it terribly interesting. I consider myself open-minded about the topic, but I must admit I am not totally convinced. The idea haunts me like a splinter in my mind. What test or experiment can I perform that would convince me one way or the other? Or may I ask, what is it that convinced you of the Flat Earth? I thank you for your time, and I understand if you're not able to respond to me. Keep up the good work either way, Anthony. You know what? I am going to respond to him. I'm going to send him the list of five science questions. And if anyone wants the five science questions that I sent to the Georgetown physicist that he just folded on uh, through a German television team as a mediary, then let me know. and I'll, I've got them just here in a little Word document. I'll shoot it to you. This one's called Space Freaking Force. Mark, holy cow, did you see this speech today? What the hell? And it's from Reg, uh, otherwise short for Regina, out in Oregon. And yeah, it was when Donald Trump said he was announcing uh, another um, military branch called the Space Force. So it wouldn't be just Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. It would also be the Space Force, which will never, ever, ever, ever wait for it ever happen. Because space, just by announcing it, you would destroy the recruiting efforts of all the other branches. No one would join anything else but the Space Force if you created it. And that, in that sense, it'd be cool. But uh, good luck getting any more um, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard. This one's called Direct TV Commercial Interesting. Mark, please don't mention my company name below. Okay, well, if you're going to do that. Yeah, just don't make your company logo so big in your footer if you're going to do that. I just saw a DirecTV commercial regarding a new service that does not require satellites. All I thought was, oh, wow, DirecTV is able to just forget about their billions of dollars worth of satellites floating around in space. No need for them now, huh? Anyways, take care. And uh, no, I will not mention your company name. But it's from James. I'll give you a first name just so you get credit for it. Uh, which one are we going to end on? Not this one. Let's do 
Plane tracking software? Well, we'll do two more. This is called Plane Tracking Software. Hello, Mark. Love your videos. Particularly interested in the tracking software software side-on view of the planes flying over the flat USA. That was a good one, yeah. A friend of mine who is really trying to get his head around the FE concept was interested to know where it comes from and how genuine it is. Can you help, please? Kind regards, Peter. Uh, that tracking software, that plane tracking software, it's not ours. It's just, it's on the internet. It's all over the place. You can find it anywhere. It's just standard plane tracking software, except that you can turn it. It's three-dimensional, so you can turn it sideways and actually see the planes go up and then go perfectly flat. So this one's called, let's see if we can do two more. This one's called Clueless Don Pettit Interview on Couple of O-Ring Seal. Hey, Mark, check out this interview with astronaut Don Pettit. The, the, the interview was not done to prove a conspiracy, but the interviewer trips up Pettit. I'm thinking inadvertently. Pettit was clueless about, Pettit's just clueless, period. Look up that guy. Uh, clueless about the O-Ring leaks and what to do if they had one. The good stuff starts in about two minutes. Yeah, that guy, oh. The fact that he's a, a rep for NASA just kills me. Uh, no, not that one. Let's see if we can. We got to find a fun one to end on. All right, let's this one. This is what we'll do. It's just a short one. This one's called The Flat Earth Army is Surging. Mark, I hope you are catching my exchange in the comments section of your newest video. My username is Matt1Up. A good read. Maybe you can jump in. Winky face. So, you know, there's got to be one more. Can we, can we do one more? Survival guide? Uh, we don't want to end on a survival guide. That's from Karen. And yes, I did send Karen a survival guide. Uh, maybe this one. Okay, let's do this one. This, this will be the last one, I swear. It's called EESA Space Communication System. Hey, Mark, not sure if you covered this already. Do you have any videos with commentary on the specific tech in this video? At seven minutes, a guy named Kevin... Kewin talks about deep space network built according to internationally agreed standards. He mentions their role in providing cross support for external agencies. Then he talks about a ground segment reference facility that replicates the system for representative compatibility testing. I thought the segment was particularly interesting because my impression is that some kind of advanced simulation system. Are they just simulating telemetry data and feeding it back to unsuspecting technicians who think it's real? It would be great to hear your thoughts on this stuff and poke some holes in what's what's covered here. You probably don't remember, but we spoke on the phone in the early days of your clues videos. And that's from Paul. And the video is called <clears throat> video is called what? Just so you guys can look it up yourself. It's called Communicating with Deep Space: How It Works, and it was published in 2013 uh, from a channel called Video from Space. Hmm. We should probably jump all over that one. I think. Is that the one we're going to end on? Yeah, let's end on that one for now. So thank you, everybody, that did uh, send me stuff to msargent23 at comcast.net. And if you have questions in the future, you can always call as well and leave me a voicemail, or you can call into the show on Strange World on Tuesday nights, or you can uh, write Patricia and me on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Uh, just want to read, let's tie it all the way back to the beginning. And that is, if you haven't looked already, go into YouTube and type in search for anything. It doesn't have to be flat earth. It could be anything. The search results are now gone. So the, the search results, you know, they'll, you'll sh you see videos, but the, the search results equals a number. It will be at a hundred thousand or a million or 10 million. They're all gone. They, they just removed it entirely. They didn't have to. So, uh, take a bow for that flat earth. You did it. That's it. We're winning the war and we march on. Until next time, guys, stay flat.